You're listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Welcome back to Give God 90, unless this is your first time listening. In that case, welcome to Give God 90. My name is Jerry Mitchell, your host for Give God 90, and I want to thank you for allowing me to join you for just a little while uh, during your part of the day. It is an absolute pleasure for me to to visit with you for just a little bit and talk about something extremely important, and uh, that is correcting some of the things that we find in Scripture that might not be exactly uh correct okay so don't let me uh uh get off track here as we we look at that but before we get into it i want to uh remind everyone a lot of people are looking for gifts to give books are a great gift right so you've got god's universe god's rules and tradition to truth my books both available at amazon barnes and noble wherever fine books are sold as as the you know the, the sales pitch goes But here is a click, too. There are uh, people who are involved with Give God 90 in various countries around the world who take care of others. And I'm not I'm not begging money for them. Okay, I, I want you to be more involved than that. I want you to please pray about helping someone. Not just writing a check and forgetting about it. Not just, uh, you know, saying, well, Lord, you need to help those people and forgetting about it. But really consider helping. Uh, you know, Jackie's taking care of some orphans in Uganda. And Mark's taking care of some in Uganda. Ronald's getting started. Uh, you know, he's going through the process of beginning that. We have these people in places uh, that we know and that we speak to regularly and one of the things that they need um you know yeah you can you can put money their way that and they would appreciate that they really do but equally as important are everyday needs you know books for schooling clothes for schooling that kind of thing if you'll go ahead and give me a a message on facebook or an email at uh, jerry at give com, you know we can do so much more your prayers are an excellent, excellent, excellent beginning. Okay? Uh, but if, and this is a big if, because you've got to listen to the Almighty on this. Trust me. If He is telling you to send them something, and I'm not talking about just writing a check to make yourself feel better. Okay? I mean a package. Okay? One that you've actually got to go to the store, put together, figure it out. Okay? That kind of thing. If he's putting that on your mind, on your heart, if he's laying that in your soul, then then you know, let me know and I will put you in contact with the proper person and you can do that. <clears throat> They're looking for uh, not just school books and that kind of thing, but Bibles, um, all kinds of, of supplies that they need. So don't don't be afraid to pray about that. Don't be afraid to act on it. If you are led, that's very, very, very important. You've got to act on this stuff if you are led to act on this stuff. You know, we have to listen and do what the Almighty says, right? And and not just about this. I'm talking about everything. Because what we're going to dig into here in a minute is exactly that. It is listening and doing. There's more to our faith than just sitting down and saying, oh, Lord, I really wish you'd find a way to help these people. I really wish. And he's sitting there on his throne saying, I'm laying it on your heart to send them something, whatever it might be that he's laying it on your heart to send you. Uh, You know, maybe he's laying it on your heart. You know, it wouldn't hurt to support Give God 90. Okay, we're reaching up around a thousand people a week, give or take. Never thought that 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 would happen, but we're reaching that many people. All I'm suggesting is that we start helping each other, okay? 
Let, let's lift each other up in prayer. Let's help each other. Let's do some things that are so worthwhile to benefit the people around us, the people that we're involved with. You know, you might be listening to this in uh, your time zone. Other people may be needy in a different time zone, and that's okay because you have the opportunity to help. You have the opportunity to benefit the people around you. And that leads me into this. Sometimes people um, get confused. We hear things coming from Christians or Jews. We hear things coming from TV evangelists. We hear things coming out of fictional TV shows. Let me suggest to you that not everything you're going to hear coming out of a TV show is true. All right. I have recently been bombarded with a lot of people talking about God's unconditional love. God loves us. He chooses to love us. But some of us, he loves more than others. Some of us, he doesn't like us very much at all. Okay. And he doesn't love us all exactly the same. You know, get that idea out of your head because it's not true. Let me, uh, if you go to uh, Psalm 5, verse 5, he says he hates those who work lawlessness. Those who purposefully, purposely uh, disregard his instructions, he has no time for you. Uh, there's a, a church I'm familiar with on their prayer list. Every time they put it out, one of the signature just above or below the signature line, I believe it is. Uh, it says, God answers the prayers of the righteous man. And they get that, you know, from a, a verse. But you've got to understand what a righteous person is, right? If you are disregarding his instructions, he does not consider you righteous and your prayers land on deaf ears. He tells us that in Isaiah. <clears throat> But what I'm going to read today comes from Jeremiah. And I don't have a really, I haven't found a, a good translation. So I'm going to sort of translate this as I read it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to base this from the King James, but going back to the Hebrew as well. And in verse uh, one of chapter seven, it says the word came to Jeremiah from Jehovah saying, speaking. Verse 2. Stand in the gate of Jehovah's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of Jehovah, all of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship Jehovah. Now, let's pause there for a minute. Jeremiah receives a word. And the first thing he receives is his instructions to go. Not to, oh, Lord, you've got to find somebody to go do this for you. I know you've got a word for these people. You've got to go find. No. Jeremiah is told, you get up. You go do this. Okay, he, he says, you've got to put your faith to action, Jeremiah. I've chosen you for this. Here's what you're going to go do. You're going to go stand at the gate of the temple, and you're going to proclaim what I say. You're going to speak the words I give you to everybody who goes in that gate. Verse 3. I love the way verse 3 starts. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts. You know, Yehovah Zabaot, the one who is the head of all of heaven's armies. That's what we're talking about here. The God of Israel. <laughs> oh, my. Now, in many translations, you're just going to say amend your ways or change your ways or something like that. And that's not exactly uh, what it, it means. It actually means to do well in your ways. And your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. It says, "Look, you know, you might not have to change, 
But you have to be doing things well. You have to be well, do well, apply yourself following God's instructions, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Verse 4, don't trust in lying words and say, you know, the temple of Jehovah, the temple of Jehovah, the temple of Jehovah, the temple of you know, Jehovah are these. He's saying, look, don't trust the people who are lying. Verse 5, for if you thoroughly do well in your ways and in your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. Now notice what is being laid out here. If you thoroughly do well, if you completely execute, right? Verse 6, if you do not oppress the stranger, if you do not oppress the fatherless, if you do not oppress the widow, and you do not shed innocent blood in this place, neither walk or walk after other gods. Don't worship idols. Okay? Don't put man above God. Don't put stone and wood above God. I could go on for a long time about that, but I won't because i got a lot to say and a little time to say it in today. I, I don't want to go along with this. Verse 7. Here's Those are the, the parameters of the condition. Verse 7. Then I will cause you to dwell. <clears throat> Verses 1 through 6 lay out certain parameters. Follow the instructions. Don't get somebody else to do it, Jeremiah. I'm giving this to you. You go stand at the gate and you tell everybody that comes in that gate the this. And it starts out, if you do this, if you do that, if you do this, if you do that, if you listen, if you do, if you do, right? Those are conditions. What is the parameter of the condition from God's side? Verse 7, then I will cause you to dwell in this place. In the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Verse 8 goes back to a warning now. This is outside of the conditions. This is a warning. Behold, pay attention. If you trust in lying words, you cannot profit. You will steal, murder, and commit adultery. You will swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal. That's a word for Lord. Okay, it's not a person, it's a word for Lord. The conditions that he is laying out here are simple. Jeremiah, go tell these people, there are conditions to what I want you to do. If you do them, it will be well with you. You can stay here, everything will be good. If you don't do them, everything's not going to be good. It's going to be bad for you. I will make sure it's bad for you, Jeremiah. Tell the people we will make sure it is bad for them. All right? It's that simple. Um, I, I really like this. I really like this. Verse 10. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Now, that sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? It says, if you come in and you do the things that I ask you to do, if you met the param my parameters, my conditions, okay, then you come in and I, you won't be accused of the abominations. You won't be accused, you know, if you're not oppressing the stranger, if you're, you know, not taking advantage of the widows and the orphans, if you're not taking advantage of, of other people, you don't have anything to worry about. Verse 11, in this house, which is called by my name. Oh, my. Become a den of robbers in your eyes. And he, he gives this warning again, this red flag. Behold. You know, look out. Lo, I have seen it. Thus saith Yehovah. He knows what you've been doing. And he's not talking about in secret. He's not talking about, I've watched you sneaking around. That's not what he's talking about. He says, I've watched how you've been acting in your churches and in your synagogues. And I don't like it. You're, he, he calls them. <laughs> he, he flat out calls them a den of robbers. 
Now, do you know where um, <laughs> John the Baptist, when he's speaking, gets his language from? Do you know where Yeshua, Jesus is speaking, when he, where he gets his language from? Right? Actually, uh, Matthew 7 comes right out of this. This is where Matthew 7 comes from. I, I read it the other night. Uh, I believe it was Thursday night. Yeah, when he says, not everybody who says to me will enter the kingdom. Not everybody who calls me Lord will enter the kingdom. Here, you know, not everybody who comes to the temple is going to enter the kingdom. Right? Verse 15, I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast all of your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not for this people. Don't lift up or cry prayer for them or make intercession to me. I will not hear you. If you, here's the conditions again, if you continually choose to deny the Almighty, to uh, <laughs> treat His instructions as something that's not important, and I'm talking about all of them, okay? I'm not just talking, you don't get to pick and choose. This isn't a cafeteria, all right? You, you, don't, you don't get to say, well, you know, God, I really like this one, but that one over there, I'm just not a fan of. I don't think I can deal with that one. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, a little adultery may not be a bad thing from time to time. He's going to say, no, I don't know you. Leave. Why are you still in front of me? Go away. Not words you want to hear from the Almighty, okay? It's that easy to understand. This is not complicated. This scripture is not complicated. The Bible is an easy, uh, it's an easy set of instructions. And it comes with examples that we see that we are to learn from. We get the instructions, we see the examples, we live our life, and we should apply the instruction to our life, and we should know which example to follow because there are examples of what happens when we do follow the instructions. There are examples of what happens when we don't follow the instructions. And we should be intelligent enough to understand that following the instructions is much easier much more productive and far more rewarding, right? I love it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> it. It's easy when you see it this way. Do you know, I, I listen to a lot of, of people, um, and, and the level of people I listen to, you have access to. I've mentioned many of them, and I'm not going to go through the list. But a lot of them are scholars and they look at this stuff and they, they talk about it and discuss it on a scholarly level. But then when they break it down, they realize how easy and simple it actually is. When we figure out that this isn't that hard, you know, we got it made. We've got it made. All you have, you know, when God says, don't murder, all you have to do is not murder. It's, you know, I don't have to murder between the hours of midnight and seven or, you know, how, however else you want to make it complicated. No, you don't have to do that. You just don't murder anybody. You don't take innocent life without just cause. When he says you don't worship idols, you don't worship idols. It's that simple. When he says you don't put any other gods in my face, you don't put any other gods in his face it doesn't matter who your favorite sports star is who your favorite actor is who your favorite politician is it just doesn't matter don't put them in his face and hold them up as equals and some of you do i've seen it i've heard it coming out of the pulpits don't do it it you know it will it will not end well for you it will not end well for you. I, 
I, I just, I, I'm going to go back to verse 15. I'm going to go back to verse 15 of Jeremiah 7. I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren. Is that what you want? Really? Be honest. Is that what you want? I don't, it's not what I want. I don't know anybody who wouldn't want to, um, how do I want to say that? I have to be careful how I say this. I know. But I don't know anybody who would not want to receive the benefits and blessings the Almighty wants to give them. I have friends on Facebook. One of them uh, is, he, he considers himself to be uh, atheist. But he consistently goes back and questions things about Scripture. If you're truly an atheist, you don't care. Okay? It, it's kind of like, um, you know, there are, there are things that I am passionate about. There are things that I, it just doesn't matter to me. You know, if somebody I don't know wants to paint their living room purple, what difference does it make to me? I'm not going to go off on some bandwagon tangent and say nobody should paint their living room purple. That's not for me to say. It is for me to say that everyone should be following the Creator's instructions and living the way their, their Creator designed them to live. That's what is for me to say. Your, you know, what color you want to paint the room you spend the most of your time in? Hey, that's up to you. you know, not everybody likes purple. Not everybody likes red or green or yellow. Not everybody, you know, that's just the way it is. But to say that, well, you know, uh, the, the temple, we believe there was purple in the temple, so everybody should paint part of their, you know, at least one room in their house purple. No, it's your house. You get to paint it whatever color you want. There's no command saying in your house you have to have a certain color room. But people want to try and do that, right? Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Here's the, here's the easy way to understand this. Let's just read Scripture and do what it says. When there are examples like Jeremiah 7 is giving us, we look at those examples and we say, am I doing this or am I doing that? Am I living according to the instructions? Okay? That's that easy. I, I was going to go on here a little ways, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to get as far as I wanted. And that's okay. That's okay. Many of you um, listen to this the evening that it comes out. And I want you to think about this. If you're listening to this and you live in the United States, this is going to be re released uh, on the Monday prior to the United States Election Day. Be very careful when you walk in to vote. Whether you vote one way or the other is between you and your Creator doesn't matter to me if you're listening to me and you've heard the things i say i want you to be very very careful about how you um, apply your right to vote i want you to be very very careful about how you influence others by your your vote because it's just not you that you may be voting for now, I know that sounds funny. You're not going to vote for yourself to take an office, right? There are people in the United States who choose not to vote for whatever reason. And that's okay. It's fine. As long as they don't think they are exempt from the consequences of not voting. I know a lot of people this year who are very troubled 
because it is contentious. It's, it, we live in dangerous, contentious times, troublesome times. We're not anywhere near the tribulation yet, okay? It's, that's, that's a long way down the line. But we do need to apply ourselves biblically. There are conditions that must be met if we consider ourselves uh, people of faith, and I should say it this way, people of the faith of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The faith that he demands for us to follow. The instructions he lays out for us to follow. When we do those things that he says for us to do, we are then going to receive his blessings. I'm not certain you're going to be receiving those blessings if you blindly follow either party lines. Right? You have to choose. It's your action. Pray. And then vote the way the Almighty would have you vote. You know, and don't be... Don't be one of these people who say, it doesn't matter which way I vote because God's going to pick. Yeah, right? But how's he going to use? Are you sure you're not being used to choose the people he wants there? You see where I'm going with that, right? You can influence the direction, not just of the United States, but your, uh, you know, many municipalities vote on the same day. Many uh, counties and states vote on the same day for their offices. Do yourself a favor. In the United States, it's a representative republic. Cast your ballot for the person who best represents your beliefs. You don't have to like that person. You don't have to vote against another person. You simply vote for the person who is best going to represent your beliefs. Don't worry about the what ifs. Don't worry about the, well, maybe this. Which person best represents your beliefs? Personally, I know who best represents my beliefs. And I have said this before. I cannot align myself with a party that uh, would like to allow the murder of children. In or out of the womb. Can't do it. Won't do it. Hope you feel the same way. If that's not the way you're led, that's not the way you're led. If you're listening to me, though, chances are you're led that way. So I think I'm pretty safe. It doesn't matter who you vote for as long as as long as you vote for the person wh who the almighty chooses for you to vote for okay you could want to vote for mickey mouse if god's telling you no don't vote for mickey mouse you push this button or you check that box however you vote in your state or your local election God says, no, you don't vote for Mickey Mouse. You vote for this person. I very strongly suggest that's who you vote for, is the one that God's telling you to vote for. Like I said, if you're listening to me, chances are it won't be the party of death. So that being said, I hate politics. I truly do. But at the same time, we must be involved because we are all uh, part of a, a form of government no matter where in the world we live. You know, people who, who live in uh, North Korea are involved in the government very heavily, even though they don't have a say. In the United States, we have the opportunity to vote. We can be freely involved and influential. Do yourselves a favor. Do your fellow man a favor. Pray, vote the way the Almighty leads you to vote. That being said, until next time, we wish you many 
many blessings. Thank you.